what's going on guys Devin with uh, team unknown racing again I know I said I wasn't going to do another video probably till next week after uh, our big event WFO for Wilcox this Saturday um, Jim and Al getting stuff ready to go um, I had some questions after the other night's video on shocks well I'm actually getting ready to do my shocks right now get them ready rebuild them cleaned out uh, shocks are already built, so this isn't going to be, you know, how I go into, say, my my boring. This is going to be just, you know, how to clean your shocks, how to rebuild them, and, you know, in the process, it's going to show you how you can, you know, build build shocks, you know, when you get them brand new, because, you know, we'll be putting them back together. So, uh, with without further ado, let's uh, let's get into this shock rebuild here. Okay, so, to start tearing down your shock, you have... You start out with your shock as it comes off the car. I, I hope this lighting is good for the camera. I really cannot see what the hell I am doing. So I hope I got my lighting right. I'm completely new to this, and thanks to your guys' support, we're going to continue doing this. But you have your shock as it comes off the car. Your first step, what you're going to want to do, you need something to drain it in. You know, I drink a lot of soda, so I always have soda cans in my office from earlier in the day, the night before. What you do is you take this cap here, actually, I'm sorry, missed a step. I mean, you can do it that way if you can get it off, but go ahead and slide that right collar off, the bottom uh, holder, whatever people call it. The reason you're going to want to do that is you're going to want to be able to grab the shock body down here, and you just simply unscrew the top cap. And then you have your mounting ring and then the seal, whatever everybody calls it different. I just call it the seal. And you just simply drain out, drain out the old oil. Always give it, give it a couple, couple little dabs to get all the oil out that way it doesn't make make a huge mess now you have all your oil drained out of the shock your next step what you want to do and if you cannot get it right off the top of the bat you're going to take your needle nose pliers and grab the shock collar and I, I know i'm going to get a lot of slack for this um i'm going to get a lot of slack for this i have mine set so i'm not putting a lot of pressure on the shaft itself what a lot of people will do, if you cannot get, get it off the first time, is take shop rag, a little blue shop rag, fold it up, and wrap it around, wrap it around the shot collar like so. So when you grab, grab the shaft with your needle nose pliers, you're, you're not cutting grooves into the shaft. I'm just going to go ahead and do this no matter what so I don't catch slack. I, I, don't, I always just forget. I know it's a safety measure. But your next step, what you want to do is go ahead and take the bottom, bottom post collar. I still don't know all these terms for them. But what you want to do is see, and that's why... I need to grab the shaft is because it was spinning in spinning in the pliers. I'll get this turned off here. And there you go. You have your bottom bottom collar ring, whatever you want to call it, off. Now that you have this piece off right here, what I like to do, I mean, most people can slide it straight out. What I like to do is just so dirt does not get contaminated in the body itself. Unscrew there. And shove the piston out. 
now we have the shock piston out of out of the uh, the piston out of the shock body. What your next step is going to be to do, depending on how tight it is, sometimes you can get get it out with your fingers. But in that cap you just took off, you're going to have one. one ring and then you have a black spacer and then under there sorry if i move that out you're going to have a second ring so going in you have one ring followed by a black spacer and followed by a second part. What I like to do is just take your blue shop rag and clean these parts out. They're gonna have some gunk and grime. Grime all up in them there. Just get all the oils out of it, all the grime that's left over into it. Just get all that junk out of it. Real simple. Clean that out real nice and good. Once that skull cleaned out, what our next step is, what you're going to see sliding off here is going to be completely different. Everybody's different. This is just how I run my shock setup. This is a shock limiter. It goes inside, goes inside the body, under, under the piston. What it does is it limits how, how much it can drop out. You, I do that to... That's how I change my droop. Everybody has different settings or different ways to change everything. Some people will use droop screws. Some people will use shock height on your sh uh, shock towers. I keep my shock towers the same. I just change everything with shock. Now that we have everything torn apart, comes this comes the fun part. If you don't have the right tool for it, and I, I don't. I, I had made one out of a flathead screwdriver. I'll go into, uh, I'll make another video on that because I actually lost my uh, lost my tool I use. But the next fun part is going to be taking that the C-clip off. There's two C-clips, one on each side of the piston. So what I'm going to do since I don't have my tool is I'm going to take a very thin needle nose pair of pliers. Let's see if I can do this left-handed so you guys can get in. And just, I may have to switch hands. Yep, there it goes. What I did just took my knee on those pliers and just went around around the, the shaft on you'll see where the new the C clip ends are. Just push down on that real quick and out pops your C clip. And then off comes your piston. And then do the same thing for okay. So now that we have the shot completely torn apart, what I like to do is get out the trusty drill. You put the shaft in the drill bit. Do not clamp it down very tight. It doesn't take much to hold it in. You're not putting hardly, you're not putting any pressure on it. Just get it spinning slightly and take your microfiber and just get, just get all the oils off of it. Get that, get that shaft nice, nice and clean. Now, what I like to do is take some metal polish, any metal polish will work, and it's hard doing it for the camera, but just run, run it through there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pull off all your contaminations of the oils, of all the dirt, etc. And then just get it spinning again, get a little more speed in it. And wipe it all off. And there you have a cleaned and polished shaft. All right, so our next step after we have polished and cleaned off the shaft, what I like to do is take, take your shock fluid. On this, it, do, it doesn't matter what weight. Just run it on your microfiber towel here. Yeah, nice and good on there. And then same thing as when you were polishing it. 
And we're just, this is basically kind of re-lubing it. Getting some polish into it. And then I'll take, even take some, and dab it on there. And just run it in, kind of like you would a camshaft if you're building an engine. And there we go. And now that we have the shot completely disassembled and cleaned out, Everything is clean, ready to be reassembled. Or if you are in the stage of a brand new shock and need to learn how to put it together, this is how we do it. So basically, what we did to take it apart is the exact, we're just doing the exact opposite, same, opposite uh, steps. You take your C-clip and you're going to clip the C-clip in, if I can grab it. This is Wind Tools. Proper tools come in very handy. And I lost the tools that I, uh, I loaned some tools out at the track this weekend and never got them back. So take it in your needle nose pliers right here and clip the bottom, clip the bottom ring back into place. It's gonna be kind of uh, difficult because we just lubed up the shaft, but there you go. So we have the first C clip on on the bottom ring and then you take your piston specially built by earl baxter at factory 41. give him a call if you want some badass shock set up and then now you take your second you take your second sear sear clip which will go on top the top hole or top ring of the piston. Okay, so now we have the piston put back, clipped on with the C clips. Now this step may or may not apply to you if you're running limiters or not. Put your limiter back on. And now what we're going to do is you take the shaft with your limiter if you're running limiters and your piston all put together. You run it back into back into the shock body. Now becomes the fun part. You take your first O-ring and you just set it on top of there. And you get a little uh, device or whatever. Make sure that gets seated straight and proper in there, which the next piece is your black spacer. You're gonna put the black spacer in. This, since it's hard, it's a hard plastic piece. That will, if you push down on that, you know, you don't really want to do it on the O-ring itself. You can damage the O-ring and then you're gonna leak out all of your shock fluid. But just take that plastic piece and shove it down in there. Next one is your final O-ring. Put that on there. And seat this down into the shock body. Don't use your X-Acto knife on the O-rings. Use your hex tool if you have to. Okay, so now we have the piston put back, clipped on with the C-clips. Now this step may or may not apply to you if you're running limiters or not. Put your limiter back on. And now what we're gonna do is you take the shaft with your limiter if you're running limiters and your piston all put together. You run it back into, back into the shock body. Now becomes the fun part. You take your first O-ring and you just set it on top of there. And you get a little uh, device or whatever. Make sure that gets seated straight improper in there which the next piece is your black spacer you're gonna put the black spacer in this since it's hard it's a hard plastic piece that will if you push down on that you know you don't really want to do it on the o-ring itself you can damage the o-ring and then you're going to leak out all of your shock fluid but just take that plastic piece and shove it down in there. 
Next one is your final O-ring. Put that on there. And seat this down into the shock body. Don't use your X-Acto knife on the O-rings. Use your hex tool if you have to. Now moving on to the next step. Once again, I'm going to get criticism for this. Grab your shock shaft and we just screw screw the end cap back or the eyelet back on. And remember not to make too much pressure with your shock shaft. have the eyelet back on now comes time for your shock weight i always use team fat team factory or factory team uh shock oil it's what i found has worked the best for me um there's devices out there you know i don't like i said i loaned all my shock stuff out at the track over the weekend and i did not get it back so we're doing this all old school way but uh, they do make, you know, stands to put your shocks in to make this a little bit easier, less messy. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your shock fluid and just pour it in there until uh, the lighting makes it very hard to see. Until you get it up to the top of the shock body. Now, what I like to do is compress it and turn it and as I'm pulling it back out I like to keep twisting it and what this is basically doing is getting all the air bubbles out of it I'm leaking oil I am not it just it took in a lot a lot of fluid so the more you do this the more you're going to have to continue to fill it up as as you pull the fluid through the piston holes, you know, they're not going to go to straight to the bottom every time. All right, now that we have all the air bubbles worked out of the shock, we go ahead and we're going to cap it off. You take your blue, in most cases it's blue. I have seen white, I have seen yellow. Put your little uh, rubber seal back on there. Then you take your eyelet. Place that on top of the blue seal, and then you take your cap and screw it down. Now, these Factory 41 shocks, they do not have a bleeder valve in the shock cap. A lot of, especially your associateds, uh, are going to have bleeder valves, which will make this a lot easier if you have bleeder valves. We do not run bleeder valves in our Factory 41 shocks. Now comes to see if you have the right amount of fluid and this uh, this is all going to depend solely, I didn't get it clean enough right there. This is all going to depend solely on your setup, which we will go into shock setup in another video at another time. What you want to do is compress it all the way down and see if it comes back out. Now every setup's different. I have a little, for my setup, on my, this is my right rear shock. On my front, both fronts, I like to have rebound like that, where it comes back out. And on my left rear, I have rebound. But on my right rear, I do not like to have rebound. So what we do is just uncap it again. And just don't, it's not going to take a lot. You take just a little bit and dump it out. And like I said, this is where the bleeder valves and the associateds come from. Earl Baxter, you got to jump in on that uh, bleeder valve. That would help out a lot. We have dumped out a little bit of fluid. You go ahead and test it again. And this time you will see absolutely, well, there's, very minimum rebound, which I, I can live with that. That's not going to affect any. Normally, I like to have it where it doesn't even come out. But that you, you can tell how much of a difference from last time, how little rebound is in there, which eh, looks like about a quarter inch to me. Quarter inch rebound in my right rear is going to be just fine. 
And now we are almost done. All you do is you take your, take your, uh, take your spring, pull it down, and take your shock boot and put it back in there. And you have one rebuilt or newly assembled shock. All right, guys, that is your basics on shock rebuilding, shock cleaning, uh, adding oil, you know, new shock build. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe in the comments below or on the team Facebook page, which I will put a link down there. Um, let us know uh, what you want me to cover next, and we will be sure to get you taken care of. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me today as we're getting ready for the great uh, first annual WFO for Wilcox Saturday night at Wild Bill's Raceway in Irving, Texas. If you're in the area, I, I personally am giving out over $200 in prizes for a few different races. There's, there's over $1,500 cash in prizes. There's going to be brand new race cars raffled off. Um, I'm contemplating on raffling off my race ready, uh, factory 41 car. I have not decided on that yet. Um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of attached to this car and I don't see this car going anywhere anytime soon. But if you're in the area, come on out, check it out and hang out. We're going to be out there from 2 PM till probably 4 AM. So, uh, come give us a, uh, come on, hang out. We're going to have food, raffles, prizes, racing. Good music, good vibes. It's all uh, one of our good friends, uh, Bradley Wilcox, two weeks ago passed away of brain cancer. Um, he was dearly missed. He was a very good friend of ours. And everybody in the community, and if you noticed uh, throughout the video, uh, WFO for Wilcox, um, went and got that done on the day he uh, we found out that we lost him. But that's what that event is about. His thing, his whole thing was wide, wide freaking open. That's why it's WFO. So if you're uh, in uh, Irving, Texas, August 3rd, come on out and check us out. Thanks for watching, guys.